All right, here I am with Dust Boot uh, version three. This is gonna be um, include basically the version two slash three acrylic parts. Um, this is basically what you'd receive in your kit. You've got a couple of brushes, a long one for the boot, a short one for the face piece. We have a short alum or a half moon acrylic piece for the uh, face. We have a circular portion for the uh, boot, and of course the window part for the boot, as well as a couple of ears, uh, yeah, wings, I'm sorry, I called these wings, um, for either side of the boot, this switch slides into the track, and of course various screws and hardware, and, and of course I throw in some hex nuts for you. So the first thing to do whenever you get started is um, of course, I've already peeled off the, uh, the paper there, but we're gonna start with our brushes. Now, whenever I go to insert the brush into this track, um, you're gonna be sliding it in. So it will take a little bit of force. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your brush and just kinda give it a, a circular turn to it to try to shape it. And whenever you do that, you'll start to see that sometimes it'll bow out like that. Switch around and try to s turn it the other way. <laughs> so one of the, one, take these brushes, one way will, will bow out on you, the other way you typically won't. And you want it not to bow out on you. Um, that'll give you a little further uh, height whenever you're putting your, your boot onto your machine. So now that we've twisted it, got a good direction, I'm gonna take the, the brush. And of course it's turning this way. And of course my face piece is turning here, so I'm gonna start, grab it with my left hand, grab the brush with my right, and I'm gonna just force it in there. Now it may take a little bit, and you may need a little assistance, um, but once it is in there, it is in there pretty good. Now, you can bend the brush out if it starts to bow a little bit on you. If it bows a lot, then turn it around. But there are, are brushes in there, Set this aside. I've poked it out the edge here just a little bit because I'm going to take a razor blade and I'm going to slice it um, on both sides so that it's nice and flush. I'm going to take my knife, I'm going to put it right up against the edge of the plastic piece, just kind of wiggle that, that tip of that br uh, knife right into the uh, bristles so that it comes out and then it's nice and flush on either side. And then I'm going to gently rock it back and forth with it sitting on the table like this and clean it, cuts it off. Now, I may need to go in and do a little bit more um, gliding. You are cutting into that brush material, so it may take a uh, couple of moments, couple, uh, certainly several swings back. But you want that brush to be sitting flush right here on the edge. So I'm gonna turn around and do the exact same process. Pop it in there, pop it through the side, and then rock it back and forth. If you have a sharp knife in there, it won't take long to cut through it. And whenever your knife lets go, it'll basically come down and hit that pin. Um, not a problem. It is steel, so it's not gonna break through or anything. But now I'm gonna kind of shape my brush a little just to make sure that it's nice and in line with my face piece. Now, save this. I'm sure I'll come up with something <laughs> I have a big box of them somewhere, and I'm definitely gonna come up with something, maybe a little brush or something that I can, a brush handle that you slide this into, and now you got a little brush. I don't know. I'll figure it out. I have enough accessories. I'll probably come up with some more. So we have the face piece. We have our acrylic uh, half moon piece here. I'm gonna set that in, down into place. And those holes should roughly line up with the heat inserts. Um, the holes on the acrylic are slightly larger. So whenever you put in your brush, there is a little bit of give and take. Um, but in the end, it should basically sit flush on either side. So I'm gonna hand tighten in a few, uh, two screws. These are the 10 millimeter by, or, I'm sorry, M3 by 10 millimeter screws. And take my, hex wrench that came in the package. And I'm gonna just send it down flush and then I'll switch to the short side to tighten it up. So I'm gonna nice and flush there. 
And then I'm going to give it a nice uh, quarter turn or a half a turn just to tighten it down. There's no need to go um, full on on this. It is just going into heat inserts and this is plastic so you don't want anything to kind of damage, uh, pull out or anything. So there, our face piece is now assembled, ready to move on to the boot. Set that aside. Now I've got my boot and we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to take my brush. I'm going to start with the brush because that is one of the easier things. And actually, let's switch that up. Let's start with our window piece. Um, that one will require possibly a hammer. Let me grab one. Now we're going to be nice and gentle with this thing. And there it goes. So I've taken my acrylic off, or my paper off for my acrylic. I've got my boot piece here. I'm going to set it facing down, sort of like that. I'm going to take my acrylic part. I'm going to gently set the tips so the curved part is going to go down. So I'm going to set those two corners right into the tip of that boot, uh, of that window area right there on top of the boot. And I'm going to slide it back, and if I need to, I'm going to take my hammer and gently tap just to make sure those, that, that acrylic is uh, set right down into those, um, those latches here. So once it is, slide that back. And once it's slid back, then I need to grab the boot by both hands like this and slide it back. Another tip there is you could take a flathead screwdriver, slide it right in there, and then you can twist it, and that kind of pushes the acrylic up into the back track so that it doesn't pop out on you. There, so we've got that set. Let me set that aside. Now we can switch our switch attention back to the brush. <laughs> so we have our brush here. Do the exact same thing. It's just a, a bigger brush. Um, grab it, twist it, and if it bows out on you like that, switch to the other side, um, twist it the other way, and try to prevent it from bowing out. But that way you can get a nice, good turn on... Let's go back the other way. <laughs> Here it goes. Much better. will be a turn on here. I mean, this is a 360 degree brush, so it goes all the way around your bit as you're cutting it. There. Now that we've got our, a nice curve on our, on our brush, I'm going to take the, the boot, I'm going to grab it with my left hand, grab the brush in my right, and I'm going to slide that right in. Now, it will take a little bit of force. This, uh, I am trying to figure out a good way to do that, but if you, but just don't stop. <laughs> and on occasion, okay, let's see. Nice and steady. There we go. Now, now the brush is nice and sitting straight. It's popped out here on both sides a little. Um, I'm going to take my knife again and do the exact same process. I'm going to set the knife right up against the front, wiggle it through the brush hairs over to the other side, and then make sure it's nice and flush up against both sides, both the front and the back, and I'm going to wiggle it back and forth and pulls off. So do it, go nice and slow, because you don't want to, uh, to cut into your plastic there. Now I'm going to just do a little bit more cleanup on that brush piece that's sticking out. Sticking out a little further than I would like. Because I do want that brush piece flush. Because remember, your boot is going to sit, or your face piece is going to sit right on top of it. And you want that, that flush so that the, it's not interfering with the uh, contact of the uh, face piece. So now I'm going to switch to the other side. Hold it in a better position. It's kind of hard to do it on camera here, but set it uh, right up, flush right up against there. 
wiggle it through the brush hairs, down onto the other side, and wiggle it back and forth. Now, of course I don't recommend this, make sure you got something to uh, protect your hands, but since I'm going to go exceedingly slowly, There, just to make sure there's a nice flush connection with that brush. So now our brush is on, our face piece, we can validate that that's a flush fit. We can see that the brush goes all the way around, so it captures all that dust. Pull that off, and now we're going to turn our attention to our acrylic. So I'm going to take the circular, or the, uh, uh, the, yeah, the, <laughs> the center boot piece. I don't know what to call it. Um, set that in there. We're going to set it, the corner back piece, back into the piece here, back into this uh, little ridge here, and then set it down. The idea with that ridge is it prevents the back from popping up um, during operation and that sort of thing, uh, mainly because I couldn't find a third, a good third piece that still left the huge opening here uh, for the intake. So now that I got the uh, plastic on there, we're going to put our two button head screws here on. We're going to do the exact same thing we did with the face, which is hold it back so that it's nice and flush. Then we're going to send it down so the screw head is flush. Go. Then we're going to switch over to the shorter side, just a half turn or a quarter turn, just to get it in there nice and tight. And now that, that acrylic piece is not going anywhere. Um, the key thing with this version 3, um, of course, compared to the version 2, version 2 had this acrylic way down here towards the bottom. So it was literally slapped right in between the bristles on the bottom which allowed for plenty of room for the spindle to come down and into the and and through the acrylic which was only maybe a half inch or so above the surface which allowed you to use very small bits and that sort of thing but with that larger intake um, in order to achieve that i had to raise the entire thing up here's a version two and you'll notice that i had to raise it up in order to get that larger intake and and basically get rid of all this support material in here so that I can have a gigantic opening um, which is sufficient for uh, larger size dust collectors and such. Now this is still a hobby machine so this isn't, this isn't the, uh, the best solution for an industrial grade um, dust boot but it is perfect for um, hobby machines especially considering I'm trying to come out with a ton of options to make it convenient. So now we've got all of this all assembled. Oh, uh, where I was leading with that was you can remove this acrylic piece with these four screws here so that your entire boot, your, your entire spindle can drop right down in between the boot if necessary. Um, if, you've, if you're using a router, um, you're going to have a smaller, it's going to have a smaller diameter, which means you can easily fit in between here. If you've got a spindle, like an 80 millimeter spindle, these boots, it can technically fit in between here. It's going to be a close fit, but this is 80 millimeters um, or 81-ish. Um, so there's a little bit of play there, but um, the spindles have got a really long chuck on them. So the chuck will definitely come way down here before you actually hit the body of the, of the spindle. So yeah, if you have a... Uh, if you have a router, if you're still using a router and you're choosing to use this version, um, version three, you can remove these, uh, this acrylic and allow the boot or the, allow the router to go right down into it. The wonderful thing is that router will then fill up that space, right? So where that acrylic is, it'll fill up that space. And if you've got a dust collector, you're perfectly fine. Having a little bigger intake is actually probably more efficient anyways. So that was my design decision there. But <laughs> so let's move on to the rest of our, our construction here, our assembly. So in your uh, wings pack, 
you're going to have a couple of these wings. Um, they're basically little trays. Um, they've got a half inch or so of play forward or backward, depending on uh, the bracketing system and where it is in order to get that bit perfectly centered in this opening. So I'm going to pop in one of these screws. I'm going to tip it over to the side here. And with my wrench here, line it up with one of the holes, send it in. Now I have not tightened that down because I do want to show you something real quick. As soon as I get both of them in there, you're going to want, I've designed all of my bracketing systems so they are perfectly dead center when the wing is right flush with the back here. So if you make that flush, your bit should be perfect. But if you need to make adjustments, you could make adjustments by loosening this, sliding this wing forward or backwards in order to achieve that uh, variability. But my goal is to make sure that it's flush whenever I design my bracketing systems. So just in case you're taking it upon yourself to design a bracketing system for your own machine, um, or for a different brand machine that I don't support yet, <laughs> um, feel free to reach out. I'd love to hear, hear from you. Um, that gives you a little bit of adjustment there. So I'm going to take the other wing here and pop that right down into place. All right, now that I've got it flush, half a turn or a quarter turn should do it. And there. Version 3 is now assembled. I'm ready to move on to move more boots and you're ready to move on to uh, um, if you haven't already assembled the bracketing system, uh, definitely do that. I have videos on all of those and yeah, you're ready to start cutting. So uh, yeah, I hope you uh, find that interesting. Um, like or subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Otherwise, uh, be sure to join us on the Facebook group or whatnot. If you have any questions, reach out to uh, info at pwncnc.com. Um, I'm always willing to help. Remember, I do have a day job, so um, this is a hobby uh, nighttime and weekend thing. So <laughs> please be patient with me. Um, yeah, don't just, uh, don't just own your CNC, dominate it. <laughs>